All right. Well, hello, everyone. Um, this is the state of U.S. highway classification. And my name is Adam Franco. I am a hobbyist mapper from Vermont. I will be your guide for the next 20 minutes. Um, so why do we need highway classification anyway? Um, there are many users of OSM data, everything from uh, data analysis and research, but two of the most common uses are for map visualizations and uh, routing applications. And both of these have some uh, important needs that need to be accounted for. So a map visualization, when you're looking at a map, that needs to manage information density. So it's simply impractical at a regional or national scale map to show all roads. Uh, in that case, cities and urban areas would just be a smear of roads. And if you take the opposite choice and just show motorways, well, rural areas may not have any roads. Um, and similarly, uh, when a user is viewing a map, they need to have their expectations set. Just because there is a road through a mountain pass doesn't mean that that's a good road that users should necessarily take, especially in the winter months. Um, and for routing applications, uh, there's no visual presentation necessarily, but when building directions, routers need to collect people from their points of origin on some small roads and then get them to the bigger, higher throughput roads that can uh, efficiently get them to travel long distances. And without uh, a systematic classification of highways, uh, the router doesn't really know to keep them on a main road versus when to jump off and take a shortcut. That becomes a very confusing situation. And so um, when we talk about highway classifications, we're talking generally about the OSM highway key. So these uh, terms, motorway, trunk, primary, secondary, tertiary, unclassified is actually a classification in OpenStreetMap. It's, this is a Britishism um, and residential. How we translate those to our American context is actually a kind of tricky thing because these words are not naturally used in how we talk about highways. So a bit of history. Um, before about a year ago, the highways in OpenStreetMap were very inconsistently tagged. So there was very little uh, translation between a secondary road in one state or area and a secondary road in another or trunk was used inconsistently around the country, what is primary, it's all very vague. And compounding that, um, partially due to that British language translation into American English, the, there became this convention of using the highway trunk tag to indicate uh, what we call expressways, or roads that are uh, divided, high speed, but not quite motorway or interstate construction level. So they might still have an intersection here or there, but they're a high speed road. And at the opposite end of the spectrum, the Tiger import of a decade ago uh, classified all small roads as highway residential, just compressing the uh, number of levels in the uh, road hierarchy. Really confusing things when routers are trying to make decisions of which one to take. So as you can see from this screenshot of the Midwest, uh, when roads are tagged um, with the classifications that were being used with this uh, trunk meaning expressway rather than most important roads, it was really impossible to render a map that people looking for a highway map could actually expect. Um, there are all, you see all these little stubs and um, you know there is a way to get from a road from Springfield to Pine Bluff, or from uh, Fayetteville to uh, Jonesburg, Jonesburg. But those aren't shown because uh, those don't have that high level of construction. And then other places we see little islands of motorways here and there. Not a great situation. So um, 
you know, as I alluded to, there's no way to render a coherent highway network at low zooms without showing way too many roads and urban areas. Um, and uh, from the routing perspective, I've tried to, been trying to use OSM data for all of my personal driving directions just to make sure it works, and it didn't. I, my router was diving me off through city centers rather than sticking to the main highway as it should have. And when we don't have these consistent classification, we end up getting into churn and edit wars because people, mappers, in different, have different uh, interpretations of what road uh, class to apply. So there have been lots of mailing list discussions about this over the years. Uh, it's been a frustrating problem until um, this past May, 11 months ago, now, um, as of I guess today is April 1st, maybe, um, the, a thread on the Talk US uh, mailing list came up. Um, Evan Fairchild uh, started this question about the trunk road tag tagging yet again, kind of an annual topic coming up. And after 17 participants sent almost 70 messages, we actually dug into this again without the hopelessness um, that had been there in the past and really figured out a problem statement and a way forward of how we could make the highway tagging in OpenStreetMap more seen. And so those discussions moved out of the mailing list over time into the OSM US Slack channel, uh, Slack's highway classification channel, where we've now had over 4,000 messages by 51 active participants and almost 100 other, uh, 100 folks total reading the messages going by, and then even more in state by state level channels. So this is really getting a lot of buy-in from the active US mapping community. And as we've figured this out, we've documented our process in the OpenStreetMap Wiki. There's uh, the 2021 Highway Classification Guidance wiki page, which has the full overview and everything you need to know, as well as links back into um, our Slack discussions and mailing list discussions. So what is the new approach? So when we look at these uh, uh, highway tag guidelines that, with their British terms, I find it helpful to really look at these as a uh, just a labels for a seven level hierarchy. So the highway motorway tag comes with the, some very specific uh, physical construction limitations. So it has to be high speed, it has to be di uh, divided with controlled interchanges and a bunch of other uh, guidelines. So trunk, highway trunk is what is used for any roads that are those most important connectors between places that don't meet those guidelines. So they're really a 1A, 1B, they're the same thing from a connectivity perspective with motorway having that little physical piece augmented to it. And from there we go on down um, the hierarchy to the, to the smaller and smaller roads that have connectivity importance more and more and more local. So the other thing that came out of these discussions was that we really as Americans, we really do need some tagging for those big uh, improved infrastructure roads. And this is where we get to the expressway equals yes tag, which has been around for a decade but not heavily used because there weren't uh, renderers that used it um, for visualization and it didn't really do anything. But we decided, you know what, we really need to fix this problem in the US. We need to break apart the physical from the connective importance of roads. Um, so as I mentioned, this is a connectivity-based uh, uh, approach. Um, and here we have New York with uh, looking at New York State has this lovely, uh, is so far the only data set we've seen from a state. They have an arterial classification code where the State Department of Transportation has actually uh, done that work of the connectivity analysis of their road network. So their top, their ACC equals one maps directly to highway equals motorway, 
ACC equals two is for the non-motorway important connectivity roads. So that's, those are shown in this uh, rendering. So those two form this top network. And as you can see over the top of New York State, there are not many people, so they're not, there's not much traffic, but there is still an important highway connection there. And so as we go down the hierarchy from that top motorway and trunk level, each additional level of the network is still going to be um, a connected network with itself, trying to avoid uh, routing islands or spurs, except in cases where there's terminal geography, like a, a blind valley going up in the mountains to a town in the mountains or a peninsula where geography really dictates what how roads uh, appear. Um, so as we go looking for data, how can we apply, what data can we apply? So I mentioned New York had this nice arterial classification code, but most states don't. So uh, state departments of transportation will uh, publish a functional classification. Uh, which is useful for figuring out which roads are more important than others. There's also the National Highway System, which is another uh, designation applied by Departments of Transportation of the most important roads. And these get us close, but they are not sufficient for what we need in OpenStreetMap. The functional classifications will, uh, or both of these actually, really drive <coughs> Um, where highway funding is going, and so state departments of transportation and legislatures will uh, give optimistic um, or extra weight to roads that they need to do a lot of fixes on. And so when we're talking about how we do connectivity um, and actually making maps and routing systems that are useful, we can't just rely on these because the reason that these classifications are in place are not the same reasons that uh, we have. So there have been other I suggestions, uh, ideas proposed for how we might identify what are the primary and trunk uh, roads. Uh, US versus state networks has been brought up. But that is doesn't always work, because these aren't, in, aren't consistently applied that US routes are always more important than state roads. Um, I believe California has actually gotten rid of all of its US routes and made them all state routes. And then some states have county routes or divide their state routes into primary state routes, and secondary state routes. And then what about Texas, which also has farm to market routes and ranch to market routes, which are yet something else. How do we map all that in? Um, so as we... Um, the process we develop is that all of these data are useful, but we can't rely on them. And so we need to do something a little bit more human-centric, which is to um, determine what are the most important regional population centers, and then what are the best ways to get between them. And that can really define our top-level motorway and trunk network. Um, and then from there, we can work down. So those population, what are the most important regional population centers? We can look at raw populations, um, but that doesn't always work when uh, we have such a high contrast between urban density and rural density. So in an urban area where there may be a, a bedroom community with no town center and uh, very minim minimal uh, services that has a population of 75,000 people versus in say rural Wyoming, the county seat that has an airport, a hospital, a university, and all of the services that people need for like several hundred miles in any direction may only have 15 to 20,000 population. So we really need to have uh, local knowledge and people in each state looking at what are those most important regional centers that uh, need to be connected by that big uh, top-level highway map roads. So another big uh, consideration in this is that we need to document and discuss this. So this is happening in the OSM wiki. As folks are in each state are building out 
um, there are lists of regional population centers and the routes between them. Documenting this gives other mappers the opportunity to really reflect on what makes these actually important. And so it's much more easy for someone coming in new to this to look at, oh, these are the list of the top most important communities. What about community X? Okay, can, should this be in there or should it not? And there can be a discussion on what makes the community important and actually get that list to be pretty solid. Same thing with the routings between them. There may be two parallel routes. Those, uh, there, you can have a debate on which one is better when you are looking at the documentation rather than mappers just going in changing the OpenStreetMap data somewhat arbitrarily and then churning back and forth. So another big advantage that we've seen is that this documentation and research project of figuring out what are the most important communities, what are the best ways to connect them, is really a great way to do outreach. And uh, with that, um, getting the more eyes on the guidelines is good. And it also gives, invites people who may have been editing on their own, adding buildings or addresses, an excuse to come in and start participating in some of the larger community discussions. So at this point, um, the trunk and motorway networks, the top level, has been completed in seven states. And five more states are very close to complete. They've uh, have their drafts in progress. The mapping is happening. They're almost there. And another 12 states have drafts started. So that's almost half of our states are making some progress on getting these state level classification guidelines in place. So you remember this uh, disconnected highway network. Well, in places where we've done this, uh, work, shout out to Moira Prime, I believe, did most of this work in Alabama and Mississippi. Uh, we now actually have the classifications in place to render maps that people expect, which opens up all sorts of opportunities. Like uh, this is the American map style that Brian presented on earlier. We can now actually do some consistent visual language to represent what those highway levels mean when it's not totally arbitrary. And similarly, we can now render expressways in a style that is familiar to users of American paper maps with this uh, case uh, with a white fill. And in this case, you see both trunk level roads that are expressways as well as primary roads that are expressways. So different levels of connectivity importance, but they're both built as big infrastructure. So what's next? Um, there, this afternoon we have a highways birds of a feather session, which will not be um, at 3:20, I should say, which is not going to be specifically highway classification. It'll be all things highways. And then uh, Brian and I tomorrow will be uh, leading a workshop on drafting state level highway classification guidelines. So, if you are in a state that has a draft in progress or is uh, needs the draft started. Come to that workshop and we'll get you going and figuring out uh, what your next steps are and getting those guidelines off the ground. Also join us in the uh, Slack or the Talk US mailing list and on the wiki. So uh, I think that is about time. <laughs>